Welcome back everybody. It is the 6th of October and I'm set up down here in Cherry Ridge next to the duck blind. This is actually I'm about 30 yards from where I killed my bear last year. Actually, I killed my bear yesterday, October 5th, 2020. Yesterday down in here. So we've got a wind kind of out of the southeast. It's going right this way. I'm expecting my deer to come from Right here behind me, there's a couple bait gator paths that split right here. One of them goes that way, and the other one goes this way. This is all bedding out here, brush. And then that swamp out there, the duck blind's actually right there. I've got a, that decent eight point that I actually saw last night below the barn when I was hunting Hollywood. That eight point actually is bedding back in here a lot, and he's coming walking right down this gator path right out of here and he's walking back up in here in the morning to bed i'm not going to shoot that deer but it's a it's a nice buck we've had a bunch of does coming down through here if i have a big doe give me a really good opportunity right here close i might take her out but really i'm hoping for a big black bear it's extremely warm oh, i got my thermos out kicking full swing here luckily We'll see what happens tonight. Of course, I forgot my stinking camera arm. Six days into it, and I'm, I'm forgetting stuff. I normally have it in my bag, but I gave it to Kelly the other day and forgot to get it back. So I'll just video stuff from hand, and if things get uh, serious, the GoPro's going to have to do. We'll see what happens here. Well, it looks like a blue heron made my wood duck box a home. Or at least it's standing on it. This is definitely one of the prettiest views have here right out across the swamp Well, we're striking out on the deer and bear so far, but we're getting quite a show from the ducks and geese. Hopefully we still have some movement in here before it gets dark.
Just made it back to the house, and as you guys know, we never saw a single deer, chipmunk, squirrel. We got to see a bunch of geese, some ducks, blue heron. That was it. So, pretty quiet evening in there. Kaylee just uh, cooked up a bunch of the back straps from the doe I shot a few days ago, and we're putting it on rice. What'd you marinate it in, babe? Teriyaki? Yeah, it was like a sesame teriyaki. Or Smells like that. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity that I had such a terrible hunt to answer a bunch of your guys' questions. I'm going to eat and then I'll answer a bunch of questions that have been asked on uh, some of the previous videos here. So the next question uh, I was going to answer the other day before we got interrupted by deer coming out was uh, what was your most devastating hunt? So. Right off the top of my head, I think of Pennsylvania last year with my recurve. That was like the, I was like of the highest, on the highest of highs and then hit the lowest of lows. Uh, it was that deer I had at like eight yards, 10 yards. I shot, I thought I smoked it. I actually hit it just a little bit low and uh, ended up tracking the deer forever. We never found it. And Actually, it was like the second day of rifle season. The neighbor ended up killing that buck with a rifle. Well, it wasn't the neighbor that killed it, but one of his buddies that was hunting on that ended up killing it. So uh, it ended up having a good ending. It didn't just run off and die, but that was definitely the most devastating uh, hunt that I can remember off the top of my head. Just having a big buck that close, just perfect with the recurve over the shoulder footage. Everything was perfect, and I just, I just made a bad shot, just a little low, but that would definitely be what I would consider my most devastating hunt. The next question, how do you decide where you or Kaylee hunt? Who gets to the first choice? Well, Kaylee can hunt wherever she wants and she gets the first choice, so she's giving me a look. You, you can hunt wherever you want, whenever you want. The next question, are you planning on hunting Ohio again this year? Yes, I've actually got a cell camera out there right now. I've been keeping track of uh, what's been going on out there. I have one nice eight point that's definitely a shooter that I've been getting pictures of, and he's really the only nice buck that I've got pictures of so far. Uh, where I'm hunting in Ohio, I have to shoot a doe first, so I've got to get out there and shoot my doe and then check the doe in, and then I have, uh, I'll have the ability to buck hunt at that point. But yes, I do plan on hunting out there. Next question, what's your favorite food plot seed. So I think the best bang for your buck when it comes to attraction and the most food is maximum blend brassica. I mean the tonnage you get out of that is is outrageous. The amount of food that comes from such a tiny little seed, uh, you can't beat it in my opinion. I think that is definitely my, my favorite food plot seed overall. How do you come up with names for your shooter bucks? So all the names uh, that I have for our shooters come from either how they look, where they're located at, or how they act from watching them in the, you know, out there in the field. Like the buck that we call Wells, I call that buck Wells because uh, he summered at our gas well piece and he was out there quite a bit. So that's why I gave him the name Wells. Uh, Hollywood, I named him Hollywood because I swear he found all my trail cameras all summer long and just posed for them. You know, I'd go down there and check the trail cameras. I have like six or seven of them down there. And every single camera would have him like just looking right at the camera. Was, yeah, so it was only fitting that uh, I named him Hollywood. What's your favorite type of hunting? So without a doubt bow hunting deer is my favorite you know I, I really enjoy all types of hunting but bow hunting deer is certainly what uh, I live for what's the absolute farthest you'd shoot a deer with your bow so this is totally my opinion not you know downplaying anybody else's thoughts on that but I can accurately shoot my bow out to 70 yards. Just put them right one on top of the other. Would I shoot a deer at 70 yards? No. 
And it's not because my ability isn't there to shoot accurately at 70 yards. It's the fact that the deer could be gone. You have no control over what that deer is doing. You know, that deer could be literally five feet away from where that arrow is going to hit by the time you pull the trigger if that thing's at 70 yards. And you might get lucky and it might not move and you might smoke it. But the reality of it is it's totally luck. It has nothing to do with your ability and your skill with the bow. It's, it's the luck of the deer continuing to stand there uh, when the arrow gets there. And you even have that trouble all, you know, as close as 40 yards. You know, 45 yards, 40, 45 yards, you wouldn't believe how much a deer can move from the time you hit the release on your trigger to when the arrow actually gets to the deer. So it's really a uh, hunter's preference. You know, if you do shoot that far, it is what it is. I don't think you're wrong for it. I think if you do kill a deer at that distance, you're luckier than heck because it really doesn't have anything to do with skill at that point. It's just, is the deer gonna be there when the arrow gets there? You know, anybody can shoot a good group with a bow if you have a good bow set up. But, uh, so what's the farthest I'll shoot a deer with a bow? I have shot a buck, uh, the buck that I called the grade eight, it was like four years ago, I shot that deer at 58 yards. And it was just a, the perfect storm, really, because I had a doe come out uh, across the field and she actually peed right at 58 yards and I ranged her, you know, right where she peed, because that eight point was right on her. and. Uh, he actually got to right where that doe peed and had his head right down in the grass, you know, sniffing that pee. So I was able to shoot at 58 yards and he had no idea I even shot. Didn't move at all. And the arrow hit him, you know, behind the shoulder and I ended up getting him. But like that was just a perfect opportunity. You know, everything, the stars aligned. He was distracted smelling that pee and, and he didn't move luckily. But, uh, you know, I, in most cases, I wouldn't probably shoot a deer past 45 yards, especially one of these huge bucks that I'm hunting. I, you know, I'd be absolutely sick to my stomach to make a marginal shot and then lose one of these things. You know, it's so hard to get a deer to that caliber in the area that I'm hunting and to, to make a bad shot and wound one of them it would be devastating. But what's the next question here? Why do you shoot doe with fawns? That's a good question. I got a lot of comments on my first one this year. So the reality of it is pretty much every doe on our farm has fawns. If, you're, if a doe doesn't have fawns, something's not quite right with the doe. Each year, each doe should get bred and each year, each doe should have fawns. And at this point, your uh, fawns are totally capable of, of making it on their own. They, they're not uh, totally uh, reliant on the mother at this point. Yeah, you still have some that are milking and whatnot, but just because they're doing that doesn't mean they can't make it on their own. And uh, I've seen in the past where I've shot, you know, big mature doe that did have fawns, those fawns actually stayed right in that area all fall and it ended up being uh, really good because when that doe fawn comes in heat later on, she's dumb and she just comes right out to the food plot like three o'clock in the afternoon and if she's in heat, guess who's coming with her? A whole parade of bucks and I've had that happen so uh, I really don't mind shooting doe that have fawns. The, fawn, the fawns are totally going to be fine you know a lot of people on here say well they go and die. No that's not true at all. They actually stay literally right in the area that you shot the mom in most cases and they stay there the whole hunting season and, and create even better hunting for you. You know and uh, if you don't shoot those uh, that mother that mother is going to boot those fawns off you know her territory and get them out of there because they don't want inbreeding and stuff so uh shooting the mother in my opinion has no effect and i've done it year after year and uh you know to each stone if you don't want to shoot a mom with fawns then you're never going to shoot a doe because uh all the does have fawns or they should have fawns but uh, until the next one i'm going to wrap this video up uh, I know there's probably more questions and I'll try to answer them on an upcoming video, but tonight was a total bust. First skunk job of the whole year. Uh, hopefully you're having a good archery season. And there's somebody uh, that was to, made a comment on one of these last videos that wanted to see this uh, shadow board that I got from my brother when I got out of the service. So this is it up close. You have the Infantryman's Creed. And uh, my time of service, Big Red 1, 1st Infantry Division. And then the most important thing on this whole thing is the EIB. 
that's the expert infantryman's badge. That's what I'm the most proud about on that whole thing. But uh, that's a wrap. Have a good one, everybody.